Hi everyone. I'm vlogging from not my car today. Today is National Cancer Survivors Day. June, I guess, is National Cancer Survivors Month, but like today is extra special because it's Cancer Survivors Day. And I am, um, it's approaching June 9th. I don't even know what today's date is. And June 9th reminds me that it's a month away from July 9th. And when I hit July 9th, I will have been a breast cancer survivor for two years. That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy and like every time, every month I get my Lupron in my arm and I just had my 21st one. I didn't vlog afterwards because I was wicked tired and I just rested and chose myself. Um, it just reminds me like I am fighting this battle every day and I know that I have this battle um, better than many other people. Um, so I <laughs> I cleaned up in my new place. <laughs> I took a nice shower this morning, got my hair cut on my earring, didn't really care. <laughs> and um, just took some time this morning to just honor myself and give myself time and grace and if there's any take home that I want people to get from this is if you are watching and you are battling cancer or I, I people use different terms for stuff like you know if you're not in treatment anymore that means that you beat cancer or whatever if you've had a cancer diagnosis it changes you as a human being I am so not the same person that I was two years ago. And I don't want to make this into something sad, but the Lupra's like that 100% kicked in. <laughs> so my emotions are way more under control, but clearly I'm crying. I don't think that's because the Lupron. I just think as tough as I am sometimes of myself and I'm learning to show myself grace and to slow down and to treat myself um, compassionately. That I'm proud of myself. Cause damn, like, I mean, I guess every cancer diagnosis is out of nowhere, but <laughs> I feel like my, my diagnosis is out of nowhere. And I just, look around my space right now and after my um after my second reconstructive surgery which happened um what uh <laughs> even not February March April May June um like four and a half or so months ago um if you missed the memo my apartment flooded and I lost a lot of stuff almost everything, almost all my clothes, I'm like I'm looking around me and like pretty much everything is new. Which you'd think would be great that it's new, but new costs money and um, you can rewind to the insurance woes that I had. <laughs> um, so yeah, new costs money and medical bills cost money. Um, and that's stressful. One thing I was um, able to keep, because <laughs> a lot of stuff gives me heebie-jeebies. Like, I bought myself a new robe. This is my Queen, she Queen of Sheba <laughs> robe here. <laughs> it's super soft and comfy, but when you're having a hot flash, it sucks because it's Sherpa. <laughs> but I purposely, like, bought it because I'm like, I look, like, so extra and high and mighty in my robe. <laughs> I just don't give a shit. Because, like, I'm in my golden chair with my Queen of Sheba robe. <laughs> I'm having a good, like, I showered, got, had a good hair day, or it's getting there. I got my helix pierced, which I had wanted to do. And I have a gorgeous couch behind you that you can't see. That's blue velvet. I spilled spaghetti sauce all over my new rug, which is the best thing to just spill <laughs> 
on a rug. And I'm like, you know what? It's christened now. I got the stain out, I think. I can't see fully well, because on a side note, I did tear my retina two weeks ago, and I still can't see well out of my right eye. And I think of all that I have done and gotten through in the last two years. I feel like I was a newbie at this for so long, searching for like answers to questions and you ask different cancer survivors and everyone's story is different. Everyone's body's different, people's treatment plans are different. So you can ask for advice from different people, including me, but your journey is truly your own because you don't know the other organs that are impacted. Like mine did not spread, like I, my, my lymph nodes were clear, but my breast cancer did have a, a, um, an impact on my uterus and my ovaries um, and like their life plan basically, which I did not expect, but it's all hormones. And when you have breast cancer that's hormone fueled, it's not just your boobs that you're considering. It's, it's your uterus, it's your ovaries because they're the ones that make the hormones are the ones that make the eggs. And that's why I'm on a Lupron, in case I had never mentioned that. I'm on a Lupron to suppress my ovaries because I don't want to have estrogen in my body because that will cause the cancer to like have estrogen to eat and grow and I don't want them to eat and grow. So that's why I've been having shots in my arm every month for the past almost two years. And I think too, like right now it's June, the weather's getting warmer, although today is bizarrely cold in New England, it's like in the 50s. I was going to go kayaking to like feel like myself again. And I had signed up for a, um, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I signed up for, I believe it's a 5K. Um, and they said, like, my, my, my feet, my Achilles will not allow me to do a 5K. I'm happy if I get in, like, a 20-minute nature walk at this point, and I'll work back up to stuff. I've just been a little busy with, like, <laughs> the shots and, like, side effects and, oh, yeah, my apartment flooded <laughs> and all that stuff. But I will get out on the water for kayaking. But they said that the 5K doesn't need to be walking. You can do it in whatever modality you want to so I can paddle it. So I plan on doing that next weekend. Um, and my goal with the paddling for the 5K is to do it on the Charles because I need space, like I need distance to be able to go 5K or two and a half because I'd go out and back. Um, and I and and I mean I I live near Boston, so like, what a gorgeous place to go to to, to kayak. Um, but it also brings back a lot for me because, you know, you get those memories, flashbacks on your phone, if you have an Apple or um, on Facebook or whatever, and it shows you pictures of like stuff that you were doing, like this is what you were doing two years ago. And one of my Apple pictures that came up was a picture of me and my kids after we had, um, gone kayaking together um, two years ago. And what's weird to me for that picture, like I was so happy to spend the time with my kids and um, we went to see fireworks too. So I'm not even sure now if that picture was after kayaking or after fireworks or before fireworks. Um, Cause it was around 4th of July. And that was the last picture I had before I was diagnosed. And like, I was just in the zone of like, hey, I'm kayaking and I'm with my kids and this is awesome. And like, I had cancer and I had absolutely no idea. And five days later, I'd find out that I had cancer. And then that led to, you know, you can rewind the last 198 vlogs or whatever it is. Um, and my life, like it had, I don't know, it, it, it won't ever be the same as it was before. And there's good in, and not good in that. Um, 
what I want to focus on, like I said, is pride and, and grace. Because anyone who's watching this right now that is a breast cancer or any cancer survivor for this National Cancer Survivors Day is to be proud of yourself and to show yourself grace. Because, I mean, I feel like it could be like 10 years down the road and like I'll be off to tamoxifen by then and, you know, not on the Lupron and I'll be 60, but <laughs> I won't be on all the meds anymore. I won't be in menopause. Hormones will be not be an issue, which will be great. And I'll still be a cancer survivor. And I'm sure there's still stuff that pops up that makes you cry or just think or I don't know. I, I, this is one of the mugs that I saved. I, most of the things, well, my clothes were kind of like, there, there really is not much of saving of anything with my clothes. All my shoes are falling apart. It, it sucks. I'll, I'll put on shoes and like anything that has glue that attaches part of the shoe, the glue just like breaks apart. I'll wear the shoes a day or two and then it'll fall apart. Anyway, but I kept this mug and I ran into the dishwasher, even though it's not dishwasher safe. I ran into the dishwasher three times on like super hot water to get rid of the cooties and I'm sure it's fine. Um, but I got this mug in uh, when I drove up, I can't remember what it's called. The road has a, has a name, I don't remember. But I drove up Mount Washington. When I moved to the Boston area, people have like on their, um, on their cars, like bumper stickers, like legit bumper stickers that say like, this car climbed Mount Washington. And I'm like, oh, how much of a big deal is it? Holy shit, it is a big deal. <laughs> you better make sure your damn brakes work. It's not so much the way, actually, I don't know which is worse. I feel like the way down is worse because like you worry that like if your brakes fail, you're fucked. Um, anyway. I did that. It was during the pandemic and I wanted a family thing to do that was like COVID safe. So, you know, sit in the car and drive up what 62,000 or 6,238 feet. Um, <laughs> and it was scary as hell <laughs> on the way down. I'm like, Oh my God, my car doesn't overheat. And I hope it stops when I need it to. And I remember being at the top of the mountain and I was like looking at my car, looking at the drive down. And I was like, holy shit. Because when you're driving down and you hit a curve, like you can't see anything. <laughs> you don't see where the road's going to. And like, there's no, there's no railing on the side. So like you sneeze and like, boop, bye. <laughs> I, I laugh, but I'm just thankful that I'm here. And I did that. Um, a lot of people called me like brave and courageous because I, um, I'm very much about like adventurizing and doing things. And some of that's been, a lot of that has been muted since all this stuff. First it was with the, um, I had a double mastectomy if you're just tuning in. Some of it was because of that and the healing behind it. Um, the medication and the side effects and then there were issues, I mean, not major issues, but there were issues with the reconstructions, which is why I had a second reconstruction in January. And I think I'm done now. I have not had the nipple tattooing yet. I feel like I don't want to do that right away. I'm just not, um, I've always said like, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want my first tattoo to be a nipple tattoo. <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> when I had my, when I had my Lupron, um, the nurse, it was a different nurse, and she said to me, um, you know, oh, you only got three left in theory, because then we reevaluate and see what my ovaries are doing. Um, and she said I should get a shot glass tattoo on my shoulder. I'm like, a shot glass? I'm, she's like, yeah, put a big 24 on it. And I'm like, didn't even dawn on me like a shot glass and shot. Like, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Maybe not on my shoulder, but that'd be kind of a cool, because all, all, all of my shots have been in my left arm. My left arm has been through a lot. And I do have um, neuropathy in my fingertips. Um, anyway, I don't want to focus on the negative today. I just, I, I want to focus on like all the stuff that I'm proud of. I suck at journaling. I try. 
And I have a gratitude journal. If you don't have one, I would suggest to get one. It can just be a blank journal and you just like write in there what you're grateful for. And it just turns your mindset. And even in the moments like pre-Lupron, I mean, you've seen me pre-Lupron many times when I'm just like, the world is awful, negative, negative, negative. I'm like dark and dreary and it's not a good me. I don't like it. It's interesting because I almost feel like another person. Um, but that's not the person I want to be long term. Um, but I, I come back to what I think will make me relaxed and happy. And I have a pillow that says just be because I don't want to negate those times when I am really angry and when I have the sensory issues that are so bad I want to punch a wall. And I literally have punched a wall once um, and it really hurt, so I never did that again. <laughs> um, how I didn't break something, I have no idea, but it was not a good day. <laughs> um, but it's okay to be that person because that's just like where you are at the moment of what's happening and it's part of this journey. It's, it's part of treatment and it's part of like how your body is responding to keep the cancer away and to get me on a path where like I don't have to like get shots all the time and I won't have to take you know pills all the time um it's funny I was talking at the at the paving uh class that I do I was talking about like my great night sleeps and stuff with my new sheets and blah blah, blah. and I switched sheets yesterday and I realized the sheets I was using was poly, were, they were polyester. I, I don't really use ever polyester. That was bad English. I don't ever really use polyester anything. Um, I wonder if this is polyester. Well, anyway, because uh, it's just like kind of scratchy, like unless you like your whole body is like lubed up in body lotion. <laughs> it's kind of like, I, I just don't like how it feels, but yet it keeps the hot flashes away. And I just got sick of how it was feeling. And I switched to cotton sheets last night and I'm like, oh, soft and cozy. And then I was up twice again last night with hot flashes. So I'm like, damn, like you gotta choose what you're gonna do. So the positive stuff, I guess this is like my, my looking back on the past two years, which I'm sure I'll, I'm, I'm supposed to do on July 9th, but um, I'm just in the zone now to do that. Um, I remember when they told me I had cancer and I, and, and I, I just assumed I would need chemo. My oncotype number was low enough that I didn't need chemo. Um, but I remember thinking, like, I'm single, I'm, I'm divorced, um, I'm single, and my kids are, well, my son was, home, my one son was home at the time for a year, and then he's been in college the past year. So I empty nested in this whole process, too. It's been a lot of change, man. <laughs> uh, empty nested, flooding, new apartment, like, you know, new town. I'm not in the same town that I was before, and I don't really know a lot of people that are here. Although there is communal seating outside and someone's sitting out there. So I could make friends doing that someday. Anyway. Um, I just remember thinking like, I'm single. And who's going to hold back my hair when I'm vomiting in the toilet from chemo? That was what was in my head. And while I didn't have chemo, having a double mastectomy, like I didn't realize, I mean, of course, you know, it sounds awful, but I didn't realize like how impactful it really was in my life and my inability to do a lot of shit. I couldn't have done it on my own. There's, a, I mean, you literally can't move your arms to like, you have lifting restrictions and like not having a partner at home, not having family nearby. I mean, my son was around he had school. I didn't want to put too much like stuff on him because he was, you know, he's a high school senior. Well, he was a high school senior. That's a lot to put on like a kid. Um, and just to throw it out there, I don't think I threw up once through all this stuff. Um, well, I, I take that back. I did throw up like a couple weeks ago because of something. And I don't even remember what it was. I think I had food poisoning or something, but it was non-cancer related. 
but I'm proud of myself. And when I say myself too, the reason why I'm vlogging is because if you've gone through this or are going through this, I want you to consider these things about yourself too. So when I say I'm proud of myself, I want you to think about like, what are you proud of with yourself as you've gone through or are going through this process? But I'm proud of myself that I, that I let myself be vulnerable to ask for help because I knew I couldn't do it alone. And those of you out there that are divorced will understand how like your friends change after you go through divorce, not always, but often. Um, I lost a lot of friends when I went through my divorce. And depending on where you live too, I mean, in some parts of suburbia, it's just normal to be, you know, the mom and the dad and the kids and the dog and the fence and blah, blah, blah. That's not my life. It's definitely not my life now. I mean, geez, I live in an apartment building and it's not family focused at all. It's more for like um, the working folk. It's really nice though, it's swanky. It's sophisticated. And I'm so grateful for the connections that helped me get here too. Anyway, so I'm proud of myself for being vulnerable and asking for help over and over and over and over again. And for kind of waving my white flag, I, I remember I, I reached out to a friend of mine that I met through Landmark and people were saying, oh, just do this, this and this. When you're throwing a cancer diagnosis, like you can't organize anything. <laughs> Your mind is just not there. I mean, I had brain fog stuff going on anyway because of the kidney stone that I'd had before, and I'm sure there was the cancer was part of it, but I remember calling her, or she asked me, she's like, what can I do? And I'm like, I don't know how to get from A to Z, or even A to B right now. Like people are telling me, like I need to organize just what I have to do, because there's just so much. And when I got the directions for my surgery about like, you know, what to take when, and, and what not to take when, and blah, blah, I'm like, I can't keep track and I and I called her and I said like I need help and I grabbed um buy yourself some fun markers by the way like thin like flare markers because the different colors just help and it, it helps cheer you up than just running with like blue or black or pencil or something about what you need to do and she helped me make a list of stuff and and just kind of like went into my head and I just like spit out all the things that was, was going on and she helped me organize, okay, here's when you take what, like you wake up in the morning, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, and that's what I needed because your head is so flooded with information and the feelings and, and, and everything, you, you can't think straight. And I'm so blessed to know those people and granted, I might not talk to them a lot, because right now, I, I I mean, I will say, I don't, I know, I'm not being the best reciprocated friend right now. Because it's like my energy right now is like on me and keeping my shit together. And, and I'm grateful for the friends that like get that and check in with me anyway. And then I know I, you know, talked about there are friends that disappear. Especially if you've just been diagnosed. There are just friends that disappear. And it's a common thread. This is not just me. I've been in enough support groups and Zooms and shit to hear. It's not about you. <laughs> when they disappear, it's not about you. It's about them and their comfort and where they are with dealing with the fact that you have cancer. And I can understand that. Um, and I don't choose to spend my energy on people that have just disappeared. If you disappear for like a couple of months, that's one thing. But like, there are some people who have not spoken to me since I got cancer. And I'm like, seriously, <laughs> family, friends, 
So if you are going through this, just know that happens. It's not just you. It happens to almost all of us. And you have to focus on the people that are there. And they're often the people that were kind of in the peripheral vision of your friends group or family or whatever. But there will be people that step in that offer help and you're like, oh, why are they helping me? I don't really know them that well. And then all of a sudden they're bringing you food and they're calling or checking in to see how you're doing and asking what you can, what you need. Or just giving you a hug, offering you a ride. So, I mean, you, you have to see what's coming at you and it's, it's a very big time to be about self-care. I mean, clearly the medical part. But by self-care, I mean, like you can't get hung up on like, why isn't that person calling me? Why did that person just disappear? There's so much shit going on. You are focused on you and you are focused on your own health and you're focused on like living. And I know when things calm down, I'll be more back to myself that I can physically like do stuff and not be so tired all the time. But that's okay for where I am right now. And that's the grace that I have for myself right now is that this is where I am right now. Like I've done a lot of stuff in the past. <laughs> I've volunteered for stuff. I've organized stuff. I've done a ton of stuff. You know, that doesn't go away. It's still a part of me, but right now, I don't really, like, I, I used to love to be around, like, tons of people. I don't want to be around tons of people right now. It's very odd for me to say that, like, I am not, not enjoying my time spent by myself. And I'm not a by myself kind of person, usually. So I don't really recognize who this person is. But this is who I am today. And that's okay. It's a process. And I, I, I was um, not comfortable being part of the cancer community at all for a very, very long time. Like maybe up to like a month ago. <laughs> I didn't want to be part of support groups. I didn't want to be labeled as a breast cancer survivor. I didn't want to have pink things. I went to Relay for Life and I got all these pink ribbon things and I'm like, I don't want them. And ironically, that, that one notebook was the only notebook I had when everything flooded that I could grab really quickly because it was just laying around. Um, and that's okay. Like your timetable is your timetable. There's no right or wrong, except for like keeping up with your medical appointments and things, that's important. And other things will throw themselves in there too, like tearing your retina out of nowhere. You're like, what the hell? Just add that to the list of shit. <laughs> I don't understand. When I'm getting older, shit happens. You know, it's healing. There's almost a, not a giving up. It's more of a, a freedom to just like, let go. Um, yeah, I mean, not, not, not to not try, but like, letting go in expectations and letting go in in other people's opinions and and letting go of what you thought things were going to look like like I never thought that my life was going to look like this um the only thing I can blame maybe for the breast cancer thing is that I used to live on Long Island it's the only thing I can think of there's show Genetic, all my genetic markers were all negative. Um, but there's a lot of people in Long Island, New York, who have breast cancer. There's pockets of places that, of women who get breast cancer. But what am I gonna do about that? Like I grew up there. Do I regret going up there? Absolutely not. It is what it is. And this roller coaster with the Lupron thing, oh God. <laughs> 
<laughs> I need to give like a large shout out. Like once I still, uh, like I do have my lovely like couch behind the my phone, but the other side has like five boxes of things from <laughs> ice scrapers to a level to a guitar and tennis balls. <laughs> and I really hope the guitar still works. Um, but things come with time. And patience is tough when you're like a, you know, get it done kind of person. But this process has its own timeline and your body has its own timeline. And sometimes you just got to slow down and just let it do what it needs to do. You know, the healing process after surgery, like you don't know how your body's going to heal. You can be super, super kind to yourself. And then, like, I ended up in PT for, like, pretty much a year. It all just takes some time. I look now at my, um, so when I had the reconstruction, it was mostly on my left breast, where they cut into the scar that I had. Um, my right breast, he didn't cut into the scar, but he did do some liposuction because, and, and I feel like it's even coming back a little bit. Where the lymph nodes were, they, they took six lymph nodes out from my right side. And it's almost like I can feel like it pulls, like my skin. Well, my boobs are heavy. Implants are heavy, by the way. I need to still go to that uh, bra person to get fitted. But they're heavy. I feel like they're heavier than like regular boobs are. And they pull at your skin, and especially if you're getting older and your skin isn't as like tight as it was when you were like 15, 20. Um, it pulls at your skin and when lymph nodes were taken out, just it's not shaped as well. And that's why he did the lipo where he did. I don't really know. I mean, it did, it did definitely have an impact. If you do get lipo, by the way, um, as part of the reconstruction, not the original reconstruction, like it would be something later on. Um, just know if your skin turns black <laughs> and it's very hard, like don't freak out because that's actually normal. Um, the first time when I saw myself, I was like, holy shit, it looks like someone beat the living crap out of you. And it feels like someone beat the living crap out of you. But it did help to reform my sides. So like I look more like human now and not like a, I don't know, Lego set getting put together. All right, so I'm hungry <laughs> and I want to get dressed and go get some breakfast. Um, my gratitude, I'm, I'm grateful that I finally found a group in the paving program that I'm in of cancer survivors that I enjoy seeing all the time. It ends next week, but hopefully we'll still be able to see each other. And I'm grateful to be in this area because the Boston area has so many different places you can go for like supreme health care. I'm grateful that even though there's a lot of bumps to get here, I'm in a beautiful apartment right now. Um, I'm looking outside at like the green trees and the cushy chairs. And knowing I could just like walk and be able to get food and like groceries if I need, which is very rare in suburbia. Um, well, I guess I live in a city more than a town now, but I'm grateful to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I get to talk to people that have have been diagnosed and, and fought this damn cancer shit and that anything that I say might help. Because I needed that when I was going through it. And I would like desperately hunt on YouTube to try to find videos and stuff to help and meditations to help and and it was hard to find things that clicked. And I'm, I'm grateful that I have a big mouth and don't mind talking to like thousands of people. 
millions, whatever, I don't know, um, that I can talk and, and share my story in the hopes that someone else is watching and saying, oh yeah, I really needed that. Or I learned this, or you know what, I'm gonna stop and take care of myself today. Whatever way that looks like. That's my gratitude. So for you breast cancer or cancer survivors and breast cancer survivors out there, a National Cancer Survivor Day. You know, look at who you are as a human, as a soul. And think of all the things that you're proud of about yourself. All the things that you've gone through and that you succeeded with. Even little things, like I got up and I combed my hair today. Be proud of yourself for going through this crazy freaking psycho battle. And if you can't find anything right now to be proud of, that's when gratitude comes into play. What do you have right now? There has to be something that you have right now that you're grateful for having. Maybe it's me. <laughs> Maybe it's something that you're eating. Maybe it's the seat that you're laying on. Maybe it's the blanket you're cuddled up with. Whatever it is, find something to be grateful for. And keep fighting the fight with grace and patience. And I'm there fighting the fight with y'all. Happy Sunday, everyone.